Ah, Greece. A country often cited as the birthplace of democracy. But how does Greece's democracy actually work? Hello and welcome to Explained, a series on the internet where I explain complex political issues meanwhile pissing off a bunch of nationalists. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button, as every two weeks there is a new video where I either go somewhere or explain something, and only 20% of my viewers are subscribed. So you might as well, it doesn't hurt you anything and you can unsubscribe anytime you like. Now, for all the two of you that don't know where Greece is, Greece is a southeastern European country located in the Balkan Peninsula. Like most European countries, Greece is classified as a parliamentary presidential republic, which means that the parliament has the majority of power. Like most democracies, Greece's government is divided into three branches, them being the executive, judicial, and legislative. Now, as I mentioned before, Greece is a parliamentary republic, which means that most of the legislative and executive power belongs to the parliament. In the parliament there are 300 seats, which are all filled by various political parties, and the guy who represents them all is the prime minister, who basically acts like the head of the state. Like in most parliamentary republics, the presidential role acts purely as a symbolic role, and in Greece his powers are very, very limited. He does get to choose the prime minister, however his choice has to be confirmed by the parliament, so, you know. And the current president of Greece is Katerina Sekirala-Polu. Now, the judicial branch works a bit different. In most democracies, there is one Supreme Court that oversees all the other courts. However, with Greece, things are a bit different. There are actually three Supreme Courts. The Court of Cassation, the Council of State, and the Chamber of Accounts. Essentially, Greece's judicial system is divided into two. Them being the civil and administrative, the Court of Cassation takes care of the civil jurisdiction while the other two work on administrative issues. Now that we learned how the government functions, let's meet the people who make the government dysfunctional. And by people, I mean political parties. Unlike the pesky, pesky United States that only has two parties, Greece has all of them. Like most other European countries, Greece is a multi-party country which means that uh, Greece has a shit ton of parties. Because there are so many parties, I will only be explaining the ones that actually have seats in the parliament. I mean, YouTubers also made a life, so... Starting off, we have the party known as New Democracy. Now, the New Democracy party started off in the 70s with the fall of the military junta. They marketed themselves as a more moderate right-wing party that prioritizes the free market and social justice, a thing that was very lacking in the military junta days. Since the 70s, the New Democracy Party was in and out of power and generally led Greece through several crises, such as the Turkey Crisis, the Macedonia Crisis and the 2011 National Debt Crisis. Their current leader is Kyriakos Mitsotakis, and yeah. The next party we have is the Syriza Party, also known as the Coalition of the Radical Left, Progressive Alliance. From their name you can infer that they are a leftist party and they basically came into life in the early 2000s as they were basically a merger of several other leftist parties that found that uh, if they worked together they were more likely to achieve their goals rather than doing it separately. They are the second most popular party in Greece and the main rival of the New Democracy Party. The party generally stands for, well, more left-leaning issues such as social programs, environmental issues and reassessing the role of the Orthodox Church in the government. However, they also have a bit of a mixture of Euroscepticism as the party has criticized the Euro several times and the role of Greece in the European Union. And their leader is Alexis Tsipras. Next up we have the Movement for Change which is a bit more left-leaning party than Syriza. Essentially they are a very new party that only came to life in 2017 and they stand for anti-fascism, anti-racism, anti-authoritarianism and anything else Emily, hashtag BLM, hashtag ACAB, hashtag bisexual, hashtag communist stands against. Essentially, this party wants a strong welfare state that would take the country out of the economic hellhole that it is right now and move it out of it. As Syriza has moved a bit more to the center of the political compass, they decide to split off and form their own thing as they want to be more radical. Uh, their current leader is Fotini Genimata. And yeah, next up we have Eastern Europe's favorite political party, the Communist Party of Greece. Now, the Communist Party of Greece is the oldest party in the country, it was formed in 1918, however it was banned in 1936 for, well, 
obvious reasons. However, even though it was banned, it played a significant role in the occupation of the country during World War II and also the Greek Civil War. Now, as you can imagine, the Communist Party is, well, communist. And their policies align very much with the marxist leninist point of view. One key thing to know about the party is that even though they are very leftist, they are anti-LGBT stuff and also anti-drug reform. So much about leftist unity. Generally, the party isn't that important in today's political landscape, however, it played a more significant role back in the 20th century, where at one point it even held 13% of the votes. Today, they mainly support protests and students that make poor life decisions. And their current leader is Dimitris Koutsopas. Moving on from the left wing, we head on to the right wing, as the next party is the Greek Solution, which has fittingly a similar name to, well, another solution. The Greek Solution is known as, well, a far-right party and even described as an ultra-nationalist party. They're very anti-immigrant and they want a strong border with Turkey, which would have an electric fence and also to kick out all illegal immigrants out of the country. Much like the Movement for Change, they're a very new political party, just formed in 2018. They also want to take the country out of the economic crisis. However, their method of doing that is through exploiting mineral resources in the country and also investing in heavy industry. They are very pro-Orthodox Church and they want better ties with Russia, China and India. Their leader is Vasilis Vilardos and yeah, finally we have Mera25 which is a surprise surprise another leftist party. Now Mera25 is the youngest of the bunch. What makes them different is that they are very pro-EU and pro-globalism and their primary goal is to create a Greek Green New Deal that would kind of get rid of the economic crisis. Their main plan to achieve this is by restructuring the national debt, reducing primary surpluses, creating a public debt restructuring company, the general reduction of tax rates, creating a public digital payment platform, converting HRADF into a development bank, respecting paid work and creative entrepreneurship. Their leader is Yanis Varoufakis, and yeah, those would be the political parties of Greece. Let me know if you would vote for any of them or if any of them surprised you. Also, click that subscribe button once more if you want to see this lovely face some more. And um, yeah, my name is Nick and you've watched Living Around Clean Europe. <laughs>